Uh, welcome to my uh, YouTube channel, uh, Danesh here. Uh, so this is the second video on a gradient descent. See, we discussed, you know, uh, about gradient descent, and I told it is an optimization algorithm used in deep learning and in machine learning. See, we discussed in the last video uh, about gradient descent, gradient ascent. What does it mean? What is gradient? Gradient means slope. The previous video you need to watch the first part uh, of gradient descent. Gradient simply means slope. It is equal to y by x or in differential calculus dy by dx. So we already uh, discussed about uh, these aspects. So in this video we need to discuss. So I told it is an iterative optimization algorithm to find the minimum of a function. Even in the last video I discussed about uh, you know what is a function. See ones who are not you know familiar with mathematical terms like relation, function. I discussed clearly what is a function. So please watch the previous video. So uh, this function, so which function? There are different types of functions. See this gradient design we are used to optimize or to find out the minimum of a, a function. That function is known as cost function. It is known as cost function. See, it is an optimization algorithm to find out the minimum of a function. Which function? Gradient descent is an optimization algorithm to find out the minimum of a function. Which function it is? It is cost function. Cost function or uh, sometimes we call it as you know loss function, error function, objective function. All these terms are somewhat similar. Loss function or error function or objective function. See all these terms are almost similar. So to find out the you know a minimum of cost function. So what is this cost function? It's a really interesting concept from a deep learning perspective or from a machine learning point of view. What is cost function? See cost function uh, or error function or loss function it is related to uh, the error of a machine learning model. So what is the error of a machine learning model? Machine learning models we used for prediction. So the error is predicted value minus actual value. So this is in simple terms. See the more advanced formulas and concepts of cost function we will discuss you know in the coming um, sessions. So in the coming videos. So for the time being so you can understand cost function is equal to error. Error in the case that is the predicted value, predicted minus actual. This is the simplest you know, representation of cost function. It is predicted minus actual value. Clear? So this is about cost function. So I have given an idea about cost function, gradient. Now I want to talk about you know some important aspects in calculus because you know uh, the calculus concepts here in this you know algorithm we are using. So those who are not familiar with the calculus. You know, uh, please uh, you know understand a little bit of calculus. It's a very, really a very interesting topic in mathematics. The concept of calculus is introduced by 
Sir Isaac Newton and Leibniz. So these two scientists only introduced the concept of calculus. Newton, Newton, Isaac Newton, and Leibniz. You may be heard of this uh, scientist Leibniz. So they they were contemporaries. They lived in the same period and they fought each other for a long time. You know who come up with the idea of uh, calculus. You know. But you know, uh, both of them, you know, contributed lot in the field of calculus. So Isaac Newton and Leibniz, these are all the two scientists who introduced calculus. And in calculus, you know, there are two sections. One is uh, differentiation. The second part we call it as integration. See, differentiation and integration there are two sections in calculus see differentiation means you are splitting uh, a physical quantity or uh, anything you are splitting into small 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 parts that is the simplest meaning of differentiation again adding those parts together we can call it as integration Integration is a type of summation only. Summation sigma, you know sigma in mathematics you learn 0 to 1 to, uh, you know, sorry, i is equal to 1 to n. That means we are adding between, you know, one, all the values between 1 and n. When you are doing summation, you won't consider the numbers between 1 and 2. But you know there are infinite bit numbers between 1 and 2, right? So all those things are included in the case of integration. That's the, it is a more, you know, precise process. More, you know, interesting and more precise, more accurate process for, you know, summation. That is integration. Differentiation is the reverse process. So both are reverse. Differentiation means splitting to minute minute things okay now you need to understand what fundamental formula of uh, uh, in differentiation so you can understand what is the derivative d by dx of x raised to n this is the formula derivative of x raised to n is n x raised to n minus 1 in the same way d by dx of x raised to 7 you can write it as 7 x raised to 7 minus 1 that is 7 x raised to 6 this is the application this formula you need to remember derivative of x raised to n is n x raised to n minus 1 so this thing when it comes there is only one variable x then I will talk about little about partial derivatives so that comes when there are two variables see partial derivative partial derivative next I am talking about partial derivative So this comes into picture when there are two variables. For example, you have the equation y is equal to x square plus y cube. So when you differentiate this equation, so here there are two variables. When you differentiate this equation, we so for derivatives you use d by dx, right? d by dx of x square d you use. So when you the important point is when you differentiate this equation with respect to y, then x will be a constant. When you differentiate this equation with respect to x, 
the other term, the other variable y will be a constant. So that is the concept of partial derivatives. So when you differentiate with one parameter, the other one will be a constant. When you differentiate with respect to x, y will be a constant. When you differentiate with respect to y, x will be a constant. So the partial derivatives, you will take it as dou y. No, we are taking, we are differentiating with respect to y. That is dou y by. You know, it is if it is differentiating with respect to y, then at that time x will be a constant. That means the what is the derivative of a constant? The derivative of a constant is zero. So you know the concept. The derivative of a constant is a uh, zero. So that is a uh, one important thing you need to understand. So the derivative of a constant is zero. So partial derivatives. See, you have a function. See, like uh, so function. In the previous video, also we have represented it is f of. If it is a function of one variable, we will write it as x. If it is a function of two variables, we will write it as f of x y. So this is a function of two variables. Then I am writing it as it is let it be x square plus y square. Then the partial derivative. Here we will use the notation do do f. f of x y do f by do f that means I am differentiating with respect to x then it would be 2x this y square is a constant the derivative of a constant is zero most important thing so derivative of five is zero the derivative of six is zero in the same way here you can write it as do by do x of Uh, you know, sorry. This is dou by dou x, dou by dou y. So dou by dou y of dou by dou y of f of x y should be two y because uh, here x is a constant, so x square is a constant. The derivative of a constant is zero. This is the concept of you know. Uh, you know partial derivatives. So to understand this gradient descent, you need a little bit of calculus, a partial derivatives. Another concept in calculus is maxima and minima. So I will talk about that as well. So then the gradient descent will be easy for you. So what is the concept of maxima and minima? So uh, there is, you know, uh, see one function we have. I will now I am talking about the concept of maxima and minima in calculus. So in this video, I have explained you what is a cost function. That is, you know, simple, you know, most uh, fundamental concept of cost function. The simplest way of explaining cost function. Then I covered. Um, What is the differentiation, calculus, partial derivatives? All these concepts we are using in gradient descent. Then you need to understand maxima and minima. So in the previous video, I covered what is local maximum and what is local minimum. So how do you calculate the local maxima and local minima of a function by using calculus? So that's what I am going to discuss now. So you have a function like that. Uh, so we are going to discuss about maxima and minima. How do you calculate the maxima and minima? So you have a function like this. F of x is equal to x cube minus 3x square. X cube minus 3x square. Plus one. This is your function. F of x is equal to x cube minus. This is a third degree polynomial. So degree means the power, the highest power of x. 
it is a third degree polynomial so you when you plot the graph of this polynomial it would be something like this so you have zero here here you have one here you have two so the graph is um, something like this so it would come like this so this is zero then it will pass to the one and then you will get like this so this is the, the maximum so this is the graph you are going to get it when you plot the graph of the polynomial y is equal to you know x cube uh, plus you know uh, you know uh, x cube minus 3x square plus 1 when you plot uh, you will get a graph somewhat similar to this so this is 2 here this is 2 this point is 2 and this point is 0 so for, in the last video also I explained you this is the local maximum this is the local maximum this is the local minimum we discussed so after drawing the graph we understood this is the local maximum which is happening at 0 it is happening for the value of x at 0 and local minimum is happening at the value of x at the 2 when x is equal to 2 is the minimum the function is a minimum so this is the minimum and this is the maximum of the function so uh, the minimum is for the value of x is equal to 2 that we can easily understand then by using calculus how you can calculate the local maximum and local minimum there are two tests one is the first order derivative test and the next one is the second order derivative test see first order derivative means for a function when you differentiate once see it is dy by dx that is first order derivative second order derivative means d square y by dx square that is the second order derivative so if it is fx so we can write it as you know uh, d of f of x so or by d of you know this by d we are differentiating with respect to x dx then this can be another way derivative we can another way we will write it as f dash f dash x means it is the derivative of x only dy by dx only we are differentiating with respect to x the function y means f of x so we in the last video also i told you f of x means y if, it, if y is a function of x so f dash x this is f dash x this is the derivative the, the, the formula we are using is in the last video we discussed d by dx of x raised to n is n x raised to n minus 1 so that we discussed I think uh, we discussed so in the same way this is 3x square d by dx of x raised to n is n x raised to n minus 1 minus 3 into x square means 2x 3 into 2x that is minus 6x plus derivative and constant is 0 so this is the derivative so here you can take up 3x common, 3x into x minus 2. So this is the derivative. Now we will assume that if f dash x is equal to 0, then we can understand. So f dash x is equal to 0. We are assuming f dash x is equal to 0. Then 3x into x minus 2 equal to 0. That means there are two points you will get x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2. So from this you understood there are two points there is local maximum and local minimum as 0 and 2. But we didn't identify which one should be the local maximum and which one should be local minimum. We got the values of local maximum and local minimum by using the first order derivative this is we differentiated only once from the first order derivative test 
see the maximum is at 0 we got x is equal to 0 the minimum is at 2 x is equal to 2 this by using the first order derivative test we got what is the maximum and minimum but which one is maximum and which one is minimum we need to use the second order derivative test so we have f dash x is this then what would be f double dash x so f double dash x will be again we are differentiating next this is f double one more time 3 into 2 x that is 6 x minus you know it would be derivative of 6 x is this is 3 into 2 x derivative of 6 x is 6 6 x so it would be 6 into all these formulas we are using is this is the formula we are using uh, d by dx of x raised to n or to find out the derivative we are using the simple formula d by dx of x raised to n is n x raised to n minus 1 you will write it here d by dx of x raised to n is n x raised to n minus 1 only this is the plus formula only we are using everywhere here so 6x minus 6 so it would be 6 into when you take common 6 into x minus 1 this is what we, we got f double dash x ok so you got uh, f double dash x as 6x minus 6 or you can write it as 6x into minus 1 so in the previous analysis from the first order derivative you got two values this 0 and 2 you got it so what you will do is so those values you know it it is you from the first order derivative test you got x is equal to 0 you got x is equal to 2 now i will calculate f this value i will calculate f double dash 0 i will calculate then i will get I will put x is equal to 0 that is 6 into 0 minus 6 that is negative 6 that means at 0 this f dash 0 is a negative value if f double dash 0 that means that here it is 0 if it is a negative then it is a maximum if this is a negative value then it is a maximum you you identify this is the way you identify that if f, f double dash 0 is a negative value when you put that x if you got some other values in, from in the first derivative test you will get two values for 0 x so if you get some other values you will put those values here f double dash 0 is negative so it is a maximum if it is a positive it is a minimum then we will calculate uh, uh, this up uh, f dash sorry f double dash 2 double dash means second derivative so i will calculate f double dash 2 that is 6 into 2 minus 6 12 minus 6 it is 6 so it is a positive value that means that point corresponding point x is equal to 2 is a minimum local minimum this is the concept of maximum and minima of a function in the calculus so we covered that as well as part of all these things we have we need to use it in gradient descent so uh, that's all you know in this video so in the next video so this is the second video related to gradient descent that's a very interesting concept and of algorithm we use it in you know many many places in you know deep learning neural networks machine learning you see it, we use it in many many places that's why i am covering it in you know in depth so this is the second video so here we discussed about what is a cost function then um, what is the calculus what is the differentiation what is partial derivative what is maxima what is minima how do you find maxima and minima of a function using calculus all these aspects we cover so the remaining aspects we will cover in the coming videos related to gradient descent thanks for watching